In this video, we're going to discuss and demonstrate an articulatory technique for the glenohumeral joint, specifically the stages of Spencer. There are a number of different positions that we can apply this technique in. Today, we're going to be demonstrating the technique with our patient in a lateral recumbent position. So go ahead and lie on your left side facing me. So a couple important points in terms of your setup. You wanna make sure that your table is at an appropriate height so that you're not having to bend down too far. You also wanna make sure that your patient is close to the edge of the table so that you're not having to bend over too far. Uh, can you move a little closer to me? Great. Um, you can also, for additional stability, uh, ask your patient to bend their knees. And for additional comfort for the patient, you can have them take their bottom hand and put it under their head as a pillow of sorts. So go ahead and take this left hand and put it right under your head. Yeah, perfect. So now it's important to consider that Spencer's technique can be used as both a diagnostic and therapeutic modality in that we are putting the glenohumeral joint through a number of different ranges of motion. And at each of those ranges of motion, we will be evaluating uh, for restricted barriers. As well, we'll use those same positions to then treat using an articulatory uh, type technique. Um, we can also use, uh, for any area that is particularly restricted, we can use the muscle energy to further enhance the treatment. And I'll demonstrate that as we go through. The most important part as we begin to make contact is to ensure that we're providing stability to the shoulder girdle. We can do that by taking our hand, our thumb and uh, index finger, and making contact with the scapula and clavicle. And we're going to push inferiorly to stabilize the scapula and clavicle and really isolate our motion to the glenohumeral joint. Then we're going to take our other hand and we're going to put um, that glenohumeral joint through a uh, number of different ranges of motion. Now it's important to remember that because we're stabilizing at the scapula and clavicle, we're actually gonna be able to use that as an indication of when we reach each end of the range of motion for the glenohumeral joint. So as we approach extension, we're only gonna move into extension as far as we're able to move the glenohumeral joint without inducing motion at the scapula and clavicle. As soon as we start to feel motion at the scapula and clavicle, we are at the end of the range of motion for the glenohumeral joint, and that's our barrier. So now we're going to test that barrier, and now we're going to apply an articulatory uh, technique through that barrier. So a nice, gentle, rhythmic motion while continuing to maintain stability at the, at the shoulder girdle. And we can do that three to five times or as many times as needed to improve motion. So our next range of motion is flexion. So we have a few different options for uh, setting up that position. So one, we can maintain our hand right here on the shoulder girdle, take our other hand and grab either the distal forearm or closer to the elbow and step towards the head of the table and continue to stabilize the shoulder girdle by leaning in and then bringing the glenohumeral joint into flexion. Now again, we're just approaching the point where we meet that restricted barrier. Uh, another option is we can switch our hands, take our other hand, stabilize the shoulder girdle, grab the forearm, uh, either distal or near the elbow, and then apply flexion again, just until we begin to feel movement at the scapula and clavicle. So this is my preferred uh, position. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through a few different articulatory motions. Good. So our next position is uh, compression with circumduction. So again, maintaining stability at the shoulder girdle. We're gonna bring our glenohumeral joint into abduction, and then we're gonna apply a longitudinal compression down the elbow towards the glenohumeral joint. We wanna make sure we really uh, maintain that stability and we don't let up as that will cause the shoulder to buckle when we compress. Instead, we're gonna maintain our stability and then apply compression down to the glenohumeral joint, and then we'll begin with small circles, feeling the motion through the glenohumeral joint as we make those circles bigger. Again, trying to maintain stability at the shoulder girdle and maintaining compression throughout. Once we get to our big circles, then we can go into the opposite direction and go from big circles to little circles. Now our next position is traction with circumduction. So now we can do this two ways. Either we can grab the forearm, bring our elbow to our side to brace, and then lift uh, tractioning at the glenohumeral joint, or we can leave the elbow uh, flexed and then hook our thumb behind 
uh, the elbow and then lift up all the while continuing to maintain our stability at the shoulder girdle. And then we can, again, begin with small circles, appreciating motion at the glenohumeral joint, and move into big circles, and then go in the opposite direction. Big circles, two small circles. Now here, we're already in the position for the next technique. We're just gonna remove our thumb, and our next position is abduction. So again, maintaining stability at the shoulder girdle. We're gonna take our hand inferior to the elbow and just push superiorly just to the restricted barrier and go through a few articulatory motions. So our next motion is adduction with external rotation. So we're just gonna take our hand, switch the position, bring our patient's hand onto our forearm and then drop their elbow in front of them, which is gonna add both adduction and external rotation. And then we're going to apply a gentle articulation right to the end of that barrier. Again, maintaining our shoulder girdle st stabilization. Our next position is gonna be internal rotation. So we're gonna take our hand again, switch our contact on the elbow and bring their hand gently towards the small of their back. Now the range of motion is gonna uh, vary depending on your patient's uh, flexibility. Um, and this can also be very uncomfortable, so make sure to um, take your time with it. Uh, so now again, stabilizing at the shoulder girdle, we can add a little force anterior, increasing the internal rotation. And remember, just until we feel the scapula start to move. So that's it for the motion here. And then our final position is going to be abduction with traction. So now we're gonna take our patient's forearm and lift it and put their hand on our shoulder. We're gonna take our hands, each of the hypothenar eminences and find the superior aspect of the deltoid. We're gonna clasp our fingers and then we're gonna apply both traction and abduction. So we're gonna do that by pulling our hands towards us at the same time that we're leaning back. Our shoulder is gonna be, is gonna be providing a counter force that's going to uh, induce that abduction at the same time that our hands are going to be scooping the deltoid out, causing that abduction and traction. So we go through a few motions. And then we can return our patient back to a neutral position and reassess for somatic dysfunction. Now for any of these different ranges of motions, we can also apply muscle energy at any particular motion that is particularly restricted that doesn't fully resolve with initial articulation. So for example, if I felt that after articulation, uh, I did not get significant improvement in motion uh, for extension, I can Again, position my patient in glenohumeral joint extension and then use that same position to apply muscle energy principles. So bringing my patient to the restricted barrier and then having them move towards their freedom, which is flexion. So go ahead and push your elbow against me. We're gonna hold an isometric resistance for three to five seconds. Then we'll have our patient relax. When they relax, we relax, still maintaining that position. After one to two seconds, we'll feel the muscles relax and we'll follow that glenohumeral joint to its next restricted barrier. Then go ahead and push again. After three to five seconds, we can have our patient relax. And then we move to the next restricted barrier and then push again. And after a total of three to five cycles, we can optionally add a passive stretch and then we'll return our patient back to neutral position and then uh, reassess for somatic dysfunction. And that can be done at any of the different ranges of motion and positions. So for the final portion of this video, I'd like to uh, perform the technique at a more real-time speed, highlighting the transitions that will make it, hopefully, easier to remember. So now, beginning from our initial position, we're going to stabilize, bring our patient into extension, and then we can transition, stabilize again, into flexion. And then bring them into abduction and then apply a compression, circumduction. Again, providing stability at the shoulder girdle. Big circles, then the opposite way. And small circles. 
then hook our thumb under their elbow and lift for traction, then small circles. Then opposite direction, going from big circles to small circles. Now we take our thumb out, continue to stabilize, and go through abduction. Good. And then we switch our hand, bring their forearm and their hand onto our forearm, continue to stabilize, drop their elbow, and then go through adduction with external rotation. And then we switch our hand again, lift their elbow, bring their hand to the small of their back, continue to stabilize, and then add some internal rotation, gently. Good. And then lift their forearm, put their hand on our shoulder, take our hypothenar eminences to the superior aspect of the, of the deltoid and traction and abduct, leaning back, pulling our hands down to the glenohumeral joint. And I am feeling a bit of extra resistance during this abduction and traction, so I'm gonna apply muscle energy to further enhance my release. So I'm going to abduct and traction, come to my restricted barrier. Now I'd like you to grab my shoulder and I'd like you to try to bring your shoulder um, back towards your, uh, to your, towards your right ear, okay? So pull against me. And then relax, good. Try to reposition. Follow to the next restricted barrier. And then go ahead, maybe a little less force. And then relax, good. Pause and follow to the next restricted barrier. And then traction again, or pull again. And then relax, pause. And we can add a final passive stretch. Return our patient back to neutral position. And then reassess for somatic dysfunction.